Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October 6, 2021 virtual electronic format of the Budget Committee of the Municipality of North Perth. My name is Alan Rothwell. I'm the councillor in the Elmo Ward, and I am serving as the uh, Budget Chair this evening and will be chairing this meeting. So first of all, we have our call to order, and we'll start with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous people of Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Next on our agenda, I have the uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Uh, I don't believe we've received any uh, at this time. Uh, however, Council, uh, if there are uh, issues that uh, you feel uh, that uh, you need to declare pecuniary interest, we can deal with them along the way. The three on our agenda, we're looking to approve or amend the agenda. I don't believe that we have any amendments. Uh, from, are there uh, any amendments uh, from councillors that we need to look at? I'm just looking at our chat. I don't see anything listed here. I will be uh, leaning on Pat for that assistance. I appreciate that, Pat. Uh, I'm looking then for a motion uh, from our councillors to uh, approve the agenda. So I'll look at uh, Councillor Andreessen. Would you move that, please? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Anstead, would you second that motion? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? We'll uh, go call the question. There we are. So that votes in process. Okay, so uh, Councillor Johnson hasn't joined us just yet, so there's nine, so that is carried. So our consent agenda, we have nothing uh, on the uh, consent agenda. Delegations and presentation, uh, we don't have anything specifically listed uh, here. And uh, now we're going to move into the reports, item six on the uh, our agenda. So what I'd like to do uh, before we uh, go into the reports uh, from Sir Jameson is just uh, take an opportunity to provide uh, a general uh, introduction to our budget process. Oh, I'm just noticing here, sorry, I'm interrupting here. Uh, Simon, I'm just looking, are we okay on the uh, audio for YouTube? I think we're okay? Okay, that's good. If it's not all right, so if uh, any of the councillors want to let us know, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Each year, a budget committee is established uh, consisting of all members of council. This committee leads the budget uh, process by reviewing budget submissions from various boards and committees as well as our, all of our departments within the municipality. We seek public input uh, in the fall with a survey, which we're going to hear about shortly, as well as uh, getting feedback at the budget open house, which will happen later this year, uh, prior to finalizing the budget document for presentation to North Perth Council for approval. There are two elements uh, of our budget. Uh, Again, for all of our members of council, they know this quite well, and certainly our staff. But for the public, uh, municipal budgets are uh, something which uh, are important to understand because uh, all of their tax dollars uh, go into uh, providing uh, the services that uh, we rely on each and every day. First is the operating uh, 
side of the budget, uh, which is are the required expenses for the day-to-day -day municipal operations, including salaries, materials, and supplies. This is largely funded by tax dollars and user fees, including charges for recreation programs, uh, water and sewer services on our urban settlements of Atwood and Listowel, our libraries, fire and police services, snow plowing and administrative costs. And just uh, while we have uh, information, last year's operating budget was approximately $15.8 million. The other side of our budget is the capital. Uh, these cover one-time projects which uh, serve as an investment in our future and benefit the community. Examples of capital expenditures include costs for a new roof, road repairs and reconstruction, the replacement of vehicles and equipment. Uh, these are new investments uh, in uh, municipal projects and the rehabilitations of our assets uh, under municipal control. Last year's capital budget was approximately $35 million, and that's for a total budget of $50.8 million. Before we move forward, I want to uh, thank our staff, including Fran, Becky, and Sarah, as well as Vice Chair Andreessen, for the uh, preparation work for the survey, which we're going to hear about shortly, uh, as well as the review of the budget policy documents, uh, which Council recently approved. So without uh, further ado, uh, we'll uh, move to item 6.1. And uh, Sarah Jamison is going to uh, present her report, which is the public engagement survey for the uh, 2022 budget. And uh, I think we can see up on screen. Thanks very much, Pat. So uh, we will move to Sarah. Perfect. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. As mentioned, we did conduct a survey of residents again for the 2022 budget. Survey was once again posted through the public engagement platform, Your Say North Perth, so available online, as well it was available in paper copy at the municipal office and all three branches of the North Perth Public Library. Survey was open for the entire month of September. It closed on September 26th at midnight. Um, it was advertised on social media, the website, and through local media. And Pat, if you just go to the next slide. You can see that survey response was down this year. 36 surveys completed compared to 78 surveys that were completed last year. So Pat, if you go to the next slide. I trust that most of you have had time to sort of take a look at the survey results. So we're not gonna go super in depth, but I'll just kind of touch on some highlights as we go through the slides. So the first one shows that 88% of the respondents of the survey are property owners in North Perth, with the other ones being either tenants or they prefer not to disclose whether they own. On the next slide, we asked which type of property the respondents owned and you can see that the majority of them were urban residential property owners. Based on feedback from last year, you guys wanted to know the age of our survey respondents. So this chart breaks down the age groups and you can see that the majority of the respondents were between 31 and 50 years old. We go to the next one. We asked their familiarity with the municipal budget process. And you can see it's just a little bit over half said that they're somewhat familiar and just under a quarter said that they're very familiar with the budget process. And next slide. This was more a qualitative analysis of the question. So we wanted to know what we could provide as a municipality that would help people understand the budget process. So again, not gonna read off all of the responses, but there was sort of a mix of stuff that we're already doing and some new suggestions that we might wanna consider for the future. If we go to the next slide. We asked respondents how they prefer to receive their information about the municipality's budget. So website, Facebook, and local media were the top three answers of that question. 
the next question, we gave them some services and asked them from their perspective what they feel are the biggest concerns facing the municipality. So it broke out the top four concerns that were noted are traffic issues, general infrastructure, growth development and sustainability, and property taxes. You can go to the next slide. So over the next few slides, respondents were asked to rate their satisfaction with services um, and the majority of them did rank their satisfaction as neutral, somewhat, or very satisfied. Areas where 10 or more respondents rated their satisfaction as either somewhat unsatisfied or very unsatisfied include bylaw enforcement, recreation facilities, residential, commercial, and industrial development, roads, and annual property taxes. We also included some of the county provided services, which they were able to rate. That data has been sent to the county for them to analyze. And then following the next few slides, we asked for their feedback regarding their satisfaction level. So why did they rate things the way that they rated them? And you can see on here, we got a few comments on how those ratings could be improved. On the next slide, based on the amount of tax that they paid in 2021, respondents were asked if they feel that they have received good value for the municipal and the county portion of their tax dollars. So on the municipal side, for the portion of their taxes that are paid to the municipality, 12 respondents feel that they're receiving good value, 10 are neutral, and 14 either disagree or strongly disagree. We asked the same question on the next slide to the respondents who said that they have agricultural property. So same question, we just gave them the agricultural tax breakdown. And on this one, three disagree that they are receiving good value for the municipal portion of their taxes, and two strongly disagree. So you can go to the next slide. We provided a chart that shows the percentage of the municipal portion of taxes that goes to each service area. If you scroll to the next couple of slides, most respondents, when asked if they would enhance, maintain, or reduce the service area's portion of municipal taxes, most respondents agreed that they would maintain. A couple points to note, there were several people who suggested that they would enhance parks and recreations percentage of municipal taxes, and 13 respondents would reduce the general government's portion. So then in the next slide, you can see that we asked again, the people who owned agricultural property, we asked the exact same question and their responses are on the next two slides. And again, we had most of them wanting to maintain those service levels. The next slide. So we asked about user fees, explained that there are certain services in the municipality that charge user fees, but still do run a deficit. Um, when asked their thoughts on increasing user fees in two areas, we had just over 58% of people say that they would support an increase to recreation user fees and 47% of people said that they would support an increase to the cemetery user fees. So a pretty even split on both of those. And the last two slides here are again, more qualitative data. Um, so this one we asked if they had any innovative ideas for building a better, stronger community. So in front of you on the screen are the responses that we received for that question and they've been grouped into categories so that you can break them down easier. And the last slide 
we asked, what information would you like to receive from the municipality that you are currently not receiving? So this question gave us feedback. Some of the responses are services that we're already offering or information that's already available. So perhaps more communication needed on our end. As well, there is a little bit of a mix and some new suggestions perhaps to be looked at in the future. And that is all that I have, unless you have any, any questions. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm just, uh, we'll just look to the uh, chat function here. Uh, counselors, if you have any questions, could you please uh, uh, go into the chat function, please? Just while uh, counselors are thinking about that, Sarah, could you uh, just uh, uh, tell us again what the breakdown was for the number of respondents that uh, were online versus those that uh, picked up paper copies at our libraries? Yes, so of the 36 respondents, 30 were online, six were paper copies. Oh, there it is on page one. I just wanted to uh, confirm that again. Thank you. Okay, so we're not seeing, oh, yes, uh, Council Barons. Go ahead, Council Barons. Um, thank you, Chair Rothwell. I was just wondering with 36 responding, how representative of that is it for the municipality? Do we have any statistics on that whatsoever? Do we have any comprehension? Um, in the statistical format, if that is representative or not. Sarah, would you like to answer that question, please? Yes, I do not have any statistical data to show how that compares to the overall population. I'll just give my comment. I mean, clearly it's a, it's a relatively low number and uh, it's not necessarily uh, statistically accurate based on our representative, I should say, of, of our population of just under 14,000 people. However, uh, the survey is on the basis of people voluntarily uh, uh, filling out the survey, taking their time and so on. So we asked and uh, this is the response that we had. So um, I think that's uh, important. Uh, I'll go to um, our CAO, Chris Snell, and then I note uh, Mary Todd. So uh, Chris Snell, please, our CAO. I certainly agree with the comments you just made, um, Chairman Rothwell, that it, it, it doesn't really provide accurate um, statistical representation. Um, it is just a little disappointing that the numbers were down and we can try and look at ways we can increase this. Um, however, as I, as we reviewed the data in the um, senior management team, we do feel that we can still pull themes or comments from it, especially around how we can better communicate with residents on the budget process. I think, I think that's one of the important themes that we pulled out of it um, initially at the senior management level. Um, so I don't think we can use it necessarily as um, statistically um, relevant or, um, but however, I think there's themes that we can pull from the information. Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm chiming in on the same train, which is that um, when you offer a, a public-based survey um, and there isn't sort of a rigorous method of sampling the population, then the use of statistics to analyze it is is uh, highly arbitrary and perhaps even misleading. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, we did manage, I think, through this survey, from what I see in it, to collect uh, some use useful and insightful information. Um, some of those splits, uh, the sort of 50-50 splits are quite intriguing actually um, and uh, would warrant uh, 
more investigation if if um, we wanted to uh, do more sampling, but um, sampling comes at a cost too, right? So um, I, I'm curious, I do have a question uh, for uh, Sarah, and that is uh, for some of the data that perhaps stood out, and, and there were a couple of questions where there were sort of eyebrows raised on my part, I, I trust that it, the same effect happened to you. Um, did you run um, information about the age splits just to see if, if there were certain um, uh, significant differences uh, based on the age range of the respondents? And not significant in the statistical sense, sorry, I should be quite clear about that, just sort of meaningful, you know, a trend, eyeball. So that information is available. Um, I didn't look at specific questions by age group, but certainly it can be done based on the results that we have. We are able to go back and look at the age category and see their responses to specific questions if that was something that you wanted more information on. Supplemental, if I might. Um, I think uh, the one area that interested me, and again, because the sample size is small, it's very difficult to ascertain uh, whether it's meaningful, is in the recreational programming comments. So um, I would be interested in seeing how that splits down by age. Um, I don't know that we need that immediately, but um, it, it, you know, where we ask about recreation and parks and trails and, and uh, those kind of amenities, I think it would be interesting to see if there's some dichotomy in terms of, uh, of age groups and how they respond to that. Very good. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, just looking at our uh, chat box. Uh, just while we're waiting, if there's any other questions, I can say that uh, in our uh, uh, meetings uh, leading up to the uh, visioning session here is that uh, uh, staff uh, and uh, Vice Chair and myself did talk about uh, the issue. And yes, it's always uh, uh, nice to have higher numbers and so on. Uh, and we talked about some ways that uh, we could uh, perhaps increase the uh, desire for the public to respond uh, and that could deal with uh, a shorter survey or a uh, more targeted approach uh, on that respect. Um, but there is a significant uh, effort that uh, staff have undertaken to put the questions together uh, and to uh, put them into the Your Signal program as well as the uh, uh, preparation and uh, placement of the paper copies of the survey for convenience uh, for those that uh, perhaps don't have access to a computer or, or skills to, to use that. Uh, so I believe that we have uh, tried to, uh, to do that. Uh, Sarah perhaps could uh, talk to uh, speak to the issue of uh, number of uh, uh, opportunities that uh, North Perth utilized to uh, publicize uh, the survey. Uh, Sarah, could you just uh, outline that again, just in the uh, in the comments, please? Yeah. So to help promote the survey, we use a various mix of social media and radio media and print media. Um, so we posted on social media. Uh, mostly on Facebook. We did post to our other social media channels as well. We advertised on CKNX radio, um, which comes at a cost per station that we advertise. We advertised on the ranch radio station, and we advertised in the banner as well. Um, and we also utilized our own website. Thank you, Sarah. And, uh, Again, not to go into too far, but there is uh, certainly cost to uh, to do that. And the question is, in terms of the uh, uh, take from the public on that, uh, it's uh, we've given the opportunity to the public uh, to say that uh, the survey is available, and we try to make it uh, accessible uh, to uh, the those. Uh, nevertheless, I think it's important that we did have uh, some people respond, and I think that's. Uh, uh, the best we can do at this moment. So are there any other questions, uh, Council? If not, uh, I do have a uh, 
resolution here uh, for consideration of council. Uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the results of the 2021 budget survey as information. I'll uh, look to uh, Councillor Behrens. Would you uh, move that motion, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you second that motion? Yes, I can second that. Any discussion on that uh, motion? If not, we'll call the question. It should be up for the vote. I believe there's nine. Okay, so there's 10. So that is uh, unanimous uh, approved. Just we'll take uh, one time out here for a second, please. just uh, note uh, Simon is trying to uh, see if we can have uh, better uh, connectivity here for uh, my speaking could uh, we just call on counselors uh, uh, are you able to hear me more clearly now with the headset on that's a lot better here in in town Alan for me Doug this is Doug okay thank you deputy mayor I'm seeing yes oh look at that isn't that wonderful uh, Simon, thanks very much. Uh, I just digress for one second. I can tell you that uh, sitting in the uh, the chair's uh, uh, role here, I'm only doing selective uh, sort of things already, but uh, hats off to our mayor who does this on a regular uh, uh, basis, and I appreciate uh, that uh, even more. Uh, so just looking at our uh, agenda, here we have uh, our thematic opportunities. This is item 6.2. So council, uh, in the email that uh, we had uh, sent out uh, on Monday afternoon, we had talked about the thematic opportunities. And I'll just ask uh, uh, Pat, uh, could you just uh, turn in the uh, uh, agenda package? I think it's page uh, 100 and... 70, oh, what did I say? Yes, I think it's it's the uh, table, uh, pardon me, it's the table in the, uh, and the report uh, there. And then I had, uh, I think it's on page uh, three of the uh, report, uh, page four of the agenda package, I think it was. Uh, so it's uh, page three of the report uh, that, uh, again, the, the thematic opportunities that we're talking about uh, uh, goes to page uh, three of uh, Sarah's report. And there's five uh, thematic areas, which are planning and growth, roads, services, amenities, community well-being and safety, and municipal operations. So those are the five thematic opportunities which uh, uh, we're talking about. And the homework uh, that uh, Vice Chair Andreessen, uh, staff and myself gave you was to look at uh, the attached uh, table and uh, sort of the rules of uh, engagement or the uh, of play here were that we were going to sort of go around uh, the uh, table virtually here and uh, uh, give the opportunity for uh, members of council uh, to give two uh, of their ideas uh, within each of those five thematic opportunities uh, for uh, better, stronger community, uh, those uh, innovative ideas, uh, noting full well the public information uh, that we did receive from those 36 respondents. Uh, so uh, without further ado, perhaps, uh, Councillor Andreessen, would you, uh, and Vice Chair, would you uh, like to start us off, please? 
Sure, thank you very much, um, Chair Rothwell. It's been great working with you and the team. And um, through you, I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing some of my ideas around um, moving forward with the, the next budget. I'm gonna begin um, with the first theme and the first theme is going to be connected to the roads side of the the um, issue, and it's about, about a capital capital expense for sure. And um, we've heard loud and clear um, through public meetings, through uh, feedback from our constituents, and even in this small survey, that traffic continues to be a huge issue for our community, and um, it's been an issue for you know. 20 years or longer and it's not getting any better and I think this is an opportunity for us as a council to really embrace um, some next steps with the traffic master plan. One of the things I would like to see um, is some changes to the intersection of line 87 and, and highway 23 um, for a roundabout installation sooner than later in that kind of master plan and I think we need to to um, investigate further around the issue around trucks and the truck bypass and what could be done to alleviate the congestion in town. Um, and I'm gonna move on to my second one. And my second one is um, regarding the Listowel or the North Perth Library Hub project. And actually this particular project actually checks the boxes of three areas. Um, and one would be planning and growth and services and amenities and community well-being. And the reason for um, my interest in this type of project as a, as a capital expense is the fact that um, this project does, you know, touch on all those three areas. And we have um, a need to do some significant work to that library. Um, we have discovered some significant issues with the, with the building itself. And there's definitely a call to continue to preserve the Carnegie Library building as well. And with the possible project moving forward, um, we could preserve the Carnegie building, add some additional social services, which would help with um, community well-being as part of the hub and at the same time add some affordable housing and um, to me that's a triple win for our community as a capital project and I really believe that through the partnerships that we're establishing with social services and with United Way I think that this could be a real benefit to our community as a capital project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Councillor and Vice Chair Andreessen, uh, is there a question? I see, uh, Mayor Todd, do you want to uh, uh, just uh, ask that question yourself and then uh, we'll have uh, uh, Vice Chair Andreessen answer that. Go ahead, uh, Mayor Todd. Sure, can do. So um, I just want to be sure this table has five uh, thematic uh, areas, if you will. And what you want to hear at this point is just two items from across any of the five. Is that is that right? Like our two best items? Yes, uh, two to start. You you won't be limited to two overall, but uh, in order to give uh, members of council the opportunity to uh, chime in uh, sooner rather than later, uh, we thought uh, it would be best to uh, to work on that. All right. Uh, and I just uh, do want to thank uh, and recognize uh, our clerk, uh, Pat Burfels, is uh, busy scribing away for us. So if you could imagine, if we were all in person. Pat would be up on a flip chart scribing this on, but she's doing uh, perhaps even a better thing. She's getting it all electronically for us. So thanks very much, Pat. Uh, next, we'll go to uh, Councillor Anstead. Neil, the floor is yours. Thanks, Chair Rothwell, and uh, thanks very much. I uh, just want to start off by thanking staff. I know to get everything together for tonight was a, a very large task, and uh, you should all be applauded for that. And similar to what Councillor Andreessen said, I did want to touch about roads, but I guess my main theme, and just going back to what we saw last year in the comments from the survey, to me, a lot of the comments were similar to what we saw this year, so I'm not surprised to see that in many ways. I think the biggest thing that I want to focus on this year is our post-COVID-19 situation or post-COVID-19 recovery. 
And what I mean by that is in terms of economic development and what does North Perth look like when we finally do get through COVID. And obviously, I'll be honest, at this point last year, I didn't think COVID was still going to be a thing. It clearly is. However, I think once we get to a point where we need to start thinking about what our post-COVID municipality looks like. Talking about economic development, I know that Perth County has its own economic development department and they do a lot of great work. I think that we need to leverage that through our economic development committee and through their group down at Perth County to ensure that we get some good movement here to ensure that we have a good basis for when we move forward post COVID-19. I'm talking about trying to get new businesses to invest here in Listowel, new stores, new restaurants, all these sorts of things that are going to be providing services to our residents that are coming here at a very rapid and quick pace. In addition to that, I also want to talk about reserves this evening. Um, I know that reserves is something that we don't talk about all that often, but again, my concern is that if we don't act and put some money into reserves now, we could be faced with some issues later. So again, what that looks like, I don't know. I'm open to discussion on that. But in terms of my two items, those economic development in our post COVID-19 world, if you will, and also reserves to ensure that we do have money set aside for other unforeseen things that do come up in the future. Thank you. Uh, we're just uh, seeking uh, uh, clarity here, uh, uh, Councillor Anstett. So we've uh, put COVID-19 recovery under the community well-being and safety. It clearly transcends many of the uh, of these thematic, but are you okay if we have that in community well-being and safety? I, I think that's fair, and I think, like you said, it does go to a lot of different columns, but I do think that, that would, that's reasonable for this, this exercise. And then in terms of uh, the uh, uh, other, uh, in terms of, uh, from a budgeting standpoint for reserves under municipal operations, would that uh, be satisfactory for yourself? Yes, yeah, sorry, I should have pointed those columns out, Chair no. Ralph. I apologize, but I think that's reasonable as well, yes. No. It's not a problem. I think we just want to seek clarification and make sure that we're putting it where uh, where it's intended. So that's fine. Okay. Any questions of council? I just thought if there's questions, we may as well seek clarification now. But I'm just uh, paying uh, attention uh, here to the uh, to that. Uh, all right. Uh, just seeing none there. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Anstead. So we'll go to uh, Councillor Behrens next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair Rothwell. Um, so for Pat's benefit, it's probably planning growth and roads is my first comment. I know I have mentioned before about a traffic network and, and trying to move traffic through the municipality. Um, I think that involves like a possible roundabout bypass, all of that, and maybe paying attention to long-term development of our subdivisions or whatever. So I think, and I know that we've been looking at a traffic plan, master plan. It's just, um, I think there's a lot more work that can be done on that as a whole. So that's my first one. And my second one is probably, um, I'm going to say municipal operations, even though it could probably fit into uh, many of the other areas. And that is my concern, and it was even mentioned in the survey, um, about returning to what our municipal mandate really is. We are the only agency um, that is responsible for local roads, library, fire, um, you know, landfill, water and sewer. That is on us, that is our mandate. And I guess in, in reviewing um, some of the comments in the survey, as well as, you know, hearing reported about uh, the cost of living increases because of the post-pandemic and, and everyone struggling with uh, the economic um, fallout from the pandemic, I guess what I'm really asking is just, you know, to pay more attention to keeping doing what we need to do but doing it well um, and that might require you know taking a look at every department and um, seeing if there's things that we're doing that 
um, we're not gleaming our payback on or whatever, but I really just think that we need to pay attention. It has to do with reserves. It has to do with everything. So I guess it's really municipal operations and getting back to what we're mandated to do as much as we would like to assist and help with every gap in our community. Our mandate is the m municipal infrastructure and services. And I think sooner or later, that's going to have to become our theme because we simply can't afford to do what we're doing. Thank you, Councillor Barons. Any questions or clarifications from members of council at this point? If not, uh, I'll say thank you, uh, Councillor Barons. Uh, next will be uh, Councillor Duncan, please. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. Um, I'm gonna, my first one, I think it overlaps a number of of the columns uh, from community safety and well-being to municipal operations to planning and growth. Um, what I'm looking for is North Perth to look at our own in-house clean water program. We all know that the municipalities surrounding us have clean water programs. Our county doesn't have one. We've talked about it in the past and it's never went anywhere. I think we have a great opportunity with our stormwater levy to maybe put a few cents from, you know, from each dollar of that stormwater levy into a clean water program to to help create uh, resiliency in our community. So that's my first one. The second one is under planning and growth. Uh, I think we need to take a long, hard look at how our municipality is growing and how much farmland we're swallowing up around our urban areas. Uh, there's a lot of things looking back that probably could have been planned better with our growth around our municipality. Uh, one, to alleviate a lot of our traffic program problems that we have. So I think that we need to take a long, hard look on where we're at with growth in this municipality and how much agricultural land we're swallowing up with our growth. That's my two for now. Thank you, uh, Councillor Duncan. Are there uh, questions or clarifications uh, there? I will add, uh, Councillor Duncan, is that uh, back in the uh, 90s uh, and early 2000s, there were, uh, there, uh, Perth County was part of the Clean Water Project, uh, uh, which involves all of the watersheds in Perth County. And then uh, County Council chose to uh, uh, no longer uh, participate in that program because there was uh, viewed uh, the province uh, uh, no longer continued to fund uh, that directly. So therefore the County Council at that time chose not to continue on that program. I certainly concur with your idea that uh, we need to have something uh, of the clean water program, which uh, follows what uh, certainly Huron County has been doing for many years. Uh, as well as other counties surrounding us. So thanks very much for your comment. Uh, next we'll have, uh, I'm going alphabetically as opposed to how we normally sit here. So Councillor Johnston, uh, I think you're uh, with us. Would you like to uh, go forward? And then on deck will be uh, Mayor Kaysenberg and Deputy Mayor Kellum. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair Rothwell and uh, Deputy Chair Andreessen for all the work you've put into this so far and staff. Uh, Everything looks like it's moving along great, and I uh, commend you for the uh, smooth sailing so far. So my couple of points are, uh, and I don't want to repeat what everyone else has, but mine are under planning and growth is affordable housing uh, and slash density of housing. We need to, and it comes back to what Councillor Duncan said, is eat up less acres. So, you know, unfortunately, we, we got to get our density up and and. You know, if these subdivisions want to keep going ahead, we, I, I agree with what Councillor Rothwell did the other night about that, that, uh, the lunar subdivision, getting it to the 245 or whatever the number was. Let's push these guys not to the minimum, but to the maximum number of units. So to me, that that's one thing, and we got to work on the affordable housing. We are pricing ourselves out of the labor force. Uh, the second thing. And, and it's kind of tied in with the the, uh, the density and the controlled growth and stuff, but under roads, 
I think the truck bypass really has to come to the forefront. I think we got to, you know, we're, we're working on this downtown traffic, but now if we can get the trucks out of it, um, you know, and, and it may involve out, out our way over here is, you know, maybe we got to bring more trucks down line 84. Maybe we've got to look at paving it and bringing them down 84 or somewhere out around town. So I think truck bypass needs to, uh, in my opinion, move to the forefront. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Uh, any questions or clarifications uh, from Council? If not, uh, we uh, thank you, Councillor Johnston. We'll go to uh, Mayor Todd, please. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Rothwell, and, and hat tip to you so far for the, the meeting uh, process that uh, is unfolding. Um, I've listened with great interest to, to others who have borrowed some of my key themes, I think, but uh, let me raise at least one new one and, uh, and uh, reiterate a second one. Um, I am uh, wholeheartedly supportive of uh, Councillor Johnston's comment with regards to affordable housing and density. Um, if we don't take care of this, this single issue will compromise and cripple the economy of, of the future North Perth and um, and a, a compromise a whole lot of other things, services, uh, health care, etc. So we absolutely, uh, and, and it's not a typical role for municipal government historically, but with changes in the way the province has done business and their, their removal of themselves from several files, um, this has to be addressed. And, um, and some of that will be policy-based and some of that I think is going to require interesting innovation. Um, to that end, then, um, I think that one of the things we owe it to ourselves to do is to hire a contract employee who will address uh, both um, issues around housing, and, and I raised this issue last year, and uh, also uh, perhaps be involved in the ongoing uh, management of the community improvement uh, plan that, um, has, that this council has started and begun to fund. And um, and uh, support that on an ongoing basis. So that's item one for me. And um, I, I don't think I can say it much better than, than Dave did tonight. Uh, item two for me uh, comes out of actually the, the comments of the public uh, survey. And that is, uh, there is some dissatisfaction at this point with regards to bylaw enforcement in our community. Um, I have my own concerns about uh, that. I have spotted that and heard from our constituents about that. And uh, I believe that uh, we need to continue to up our game there. And so uh, while the survey is not particularly directive uh, in what the, the community is proposing, I think we need to be um, uh, clear about our commitment to investing in bylaw enforcement uh, to assure that the community uh, is getting what it needs with regards to uh, um, comfortable standards of living that are enforced properly. Uh, so those are the two things I'll put on. I, I think like probably most of the counselors, I have about 16 others, but um, those two are of particular interest. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Are there any questions or clarifications uh, requested of the mayor? I will say if each counselor has 16, we, we could be in for a late night. <laughs> Nevertheless, they're all ideas, and I think this is important that we uh, share those in, in this respect. So thanks very much. Uh, oh, Mayor Todd, so uh, uh, Councillor Behrens has a question. Uh, go ahead, uh, Councillor Behrens, please. Um, yeah, I'm just, it got a little choppy, my audio, so I do apologize, Mayor Todd. Just to clarify, you had suggested hiring a contract employee and I missed what you said the contract employee was going to do. Can you just run that past me again? Absolutely. So um, at, by the end of this year, our, our um, funded contract employee who works on the community improvement plan uh, will uh, lose funds for that. And I believe that role needs to be continued at least half time. And in addition, I believe that that role can be added on to the other half time with duties to support creating a housing climate that is affordable by working with developers through not-for-profits like Habitat for Humanity, 
and um, and with planning departments at the county to um, to try to stimulate supply and also to support uh, in some cases uh, requests from our employers and others uh, for demand if you will so that's the proposition was the audio okay I can't hear anything. Sorry, sorry. The rookie had a problem here. I didn't unmute myself. Uh, thanks, Mayor Todd, for your comments. I appreciate that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum will be up, uh, and then followed by Councillor Richardson, Councillor Seiler, and then myself. So Deputy Mayor Kellum, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Rothwell, through you, and uh, you're doing a fine job. Uh, no, no problems there. It's uh, difficult when you're seventh on the list because a lot of it is repetitious, but I think uh, some of this is, is going in the same direction. A lot of comments that I have had has to deal with the, the, the traffic traffic flow, and I think we're on it, but I think we need to uh, be more persistent on it, especially with uh, you know line 87, 124. Um, that seems to be a topic that, that keeps coming up to me along with a, a truck bypass, but we can deal with that later. The other thing is, um, is, 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 has been discussed is about affordable or attainable housing, and, and that is big. You know, I believe every council member and the mayor on here is in favor of that, and nothing is is happening. Uh, there are other municipalities that are allocating uh, reserves in their budget to move forward uh, for when or if there is going to be provincial or federal funding. I think it's time for us to step up and uh, put reserves into that. I'm not sure of the, the value, but I think we need to be prepared if something comes through that that uh, we can, can match. And taking it one step for, further, um, land. Maybe there is some land that the municipality owns that we can allocate. I'm not sure whether it's in the Listowel Ward, the Elmo Ward, or the Wallace Ward. But maybe there are some lands that we can allocate to uh, help move and be the leaders in this, uh, you know, attainable or affordable housing. I do have other items, but those are two brief comments that I'll make for now. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Are there any questions or uh, clarifications uh, from the Deputy Mayor's comments? All right, seeing none. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, next, we'll uh, move to Councillor Richardson, please. Thank you, Chair Rothwell. You're doing a fine bang-up job tonight, and I'd like to thank everyone who's uh, put all this information. It's, it's uh, certainly been an awful lot of work, and uh, like Deputy Mayor Kellum had made mention of uh, coming later down the list, there's a lot of repetition that we come in here. Um, I'm going to have to chime in as well. Affordable housing is an incredible key. There's a possibility to add on to land allocation of what Deputy Mayor Kellum had said. Possibility of a small tiny homes project, a uh, pilot project um, to be able to do that to at least give it a go. I think if we try and encourage the way development is happening in North Perth right now, trying to get developers to do things at a very reduced cost, it's nonsensical at this point in time that like it's very difficult to even find contractors let alone do it at cost so i think we might have to take the ball putting stuff into reserves putting some extra few shekels into reserves i feel very strongly about that i think we need to do that overall uh going over to roads quickly i'm going to take a liberty here and do three um roads all of our infrastructure we have an awful lot of infrastructure you're going to have some incredibly critical infrastructure that needs to be looked at, of which includes the truck bypass, of which includes incorporating roundabouts, but it's also going to include a lot of existing infrastructure that we happen to have that's going to need to be upgraded. We have a lot of, we're going to have bridges coming up. There's going to, uh, and some of these items are incredibly, incredibly expensive items that we are going to, if we can't get funding, we need to be able to pay for them somehow because that's the reason we're here because that's one of the items that uh, 
Councillor Barron's made mention of that's our mandate. We provide collect the tax dollars and we provide these services to the ratepayers of North Perth to be able to provide these roads that they're in their infrastructure is in good working condition. My final point under community well being and safety, I would like it looked at um, as we do know that we have a traffic master plan that is up and coming. Um, traffic is a concern of which dovetail that with the possibility of roundabouts or the truck bypass. I would also like to see the possibility of this budget included is to some of those more photo radar signs that we happen to have around town that uh, limit the, at least notify um, some of the, that you're going too fast. I think we need to budget for um, a few more of those. And I also know that there are other municipalities that are testing out photo radar and the ability to actually issue tickets um, and not doing it as a, a revenue generator, but to, especially in community safety zones and around schools and stuff like that, is a possibility of looking at uh, actual photo radar that can take the ticket and give people an actual ticket instead of just saying you're going too fast penalize them for going too fast because uh, that could also possibly assist with the policing as well because then we don't have to have them out. I'm not saying that's a little moot at the point but those are my points the photo radar and the extra speed signs I don't know I think they're just radar signs but the actual photo radar that we can issue a ticket I think that's something that needs to be looked at as well because there are some aspects of the North Perth tra or the Listowel traffic especially are getting a little out of control that we need to somehow try and alleviate that to the best of our abilities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. Are there any questions or clarifications uh, from Councillor Richardson's comments? If not, uh, clearly, uh, uh, I should said this earlier, but uh, certainly when we're going through this uh, round is that the expectation is that uh, if there are sort of legislative sorts of things uh, that uh, either A, allow us or B, don't allow us to do certain things, staff, well, I'm sure will uh, do that research and we'll have that conversation around the council table uh, and, and we'll have further conversation about that. But uh, thanks for your comments uh, and suggestions, Councillor Richardson. Uh, we're going to go to Councillor Siler next, please. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell, and you're doing a very good job tonight, as always. Anyhow, I have heard lots of comments here and lots of good comments uh, that the council has passed out, and I guess I will have to focus on my on the roads, and I will will also with the roundabout, and I will actually speak to it. I know we we're trying to get our traffic control in town, and a lot of people say, well, you just, you need you need a bypass, but. Anyhow, right now the way it sits to, to run a bypass on six on 165 and up 87 to Highway 23, we need a loaded truck. If we send a loaded truck that way, it comes up to Highway 23 at that intersection. You can't get out. You can't get out the way it is right now. That's why it's crucial that we put a roundabout in place there so that we can keep the traffic moving. In that intersection right now it's very almost impossible to, to bring a loaded truck that way and we also have to address at line 165 and i think 87 there i know we do have a light there now finally but i think that we need to look at that intersection and it could because when we that roundabout's in place at, at the highway you're going to have a lot more traffic going around there and i think that it needs to be addressed there because there's uh, a lot of uh, speedy traffic coming down line 87 to that intersection and whatnot. So that's uh, that, that's my uh, take on, on the, what's the roundabout. And I guess my second one is the planning and growth. I, I feel that the Northeast project, I think we did, we, we did some work on it. And I think that we need to, to carry on with it. And we need to uh, look at how we're going to develop that out there with our roads on on uh, Highway 23 leading to our roundabout uh, to, to make uh, things all come into perspective. So anyhow, that's that's my two and thank you. Any uh, points of clarification uh, from Councillor Seiler? 
I do thank uh, Councillor Seiler for giving his uh, professional uh, truck driver experience uh, with loaded trucks and so on. Who, uh, who better than a milk transport driver to uh, give us ideas in terms of uh, experiences uh, with a loaded truck? I see uh, Mayor Todd would like to uh, ask a question. Go ahead, Mayor Todd. Thanks, Chair Rothwell. Uh, Councillor Seiler, just a quick question for you. Um, you know, the, the Northeast Master Plan uh, is sort of uh, almost scheduled over a couple of increments of investment over the next few years, as I understand it. Um, are you proposing that we actually accelerate the, the spend on this, move forward faster than the current plan, which I think is... Um, you know, five million this year and five next year and five the, the year after that. Is that what you're suggesting? Is that we try to move more quickly in 2022 and 2023 early part? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Actually, what I'm proposing is I think that there's maybe that use of that property that the municipality could make of is that's what I'm looking at. I think that there might be a use there. And as a council, we should figure out some of those uses that maybe that we can work towards and sp and speed it up a little bit and maybe we can get a little bit of help with some funding to to do that i'm not going to point out anything that, that I, I want there but or what i think should be there but i feel that we just need to uh kind of know where we're going with it and what we're going to put there thank you thanks very much uh councillor seiler uh, so now we'll uh, go to myself here, and of course being last on the list means that uh, many great ideas have already been shared. So uh, uh, I think uh, my one uh, key is under uh, community well-being and safety, and it's uh, the mental health uh, 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 programming and facilities uh, that we have uh, and cooperation that has been shown. Uh, within our community and the need to ensure that uh, there is that continued cooperation and uh, whether that means uh, uh, related to this in terms of uh, community safety and well-being uh, it goes into services and amenities in terms of the community hub which uh, Councillor Andreessen spoke of uh, but mental health uh, we know uh, especially during COVID uh, we had the research uh, that was done by uh, the professor, assistant professor from the University of Guelph, uh, Leith Deacon. Uh, we know uh, there are challenges in agriculture uh, with our farmers, uh, which are being pushed and pushed uh, on these issues, uh, critical issues. And I uh, echo uh, some of the comments uh, that have been made within our community is that we don't need to have uh, one more group doing something. We need to make sure there's a coordination of groups. And I think that uh, came out loud and clear in the uh, the uh, information that came from our mayor's task force on uh, mental health. So that would be my first one. And the next one is uh, under planning and growth. And uh, we've uh, heard uh, many councillors talk about uh, this issue. Uh, and it goes, in my view, beyond uh, just uh, official plans and so on. It's a whole issue of sustainability. And uh, we've talked uh, in the importance uh, within our community in terms of welcoming uh, newcomers and, and others, uh, both uh, as residents as well as new businesses uh, within our community. Uh, but clearly the importance uh, of being able to sustain our uh, current uh, activities and whether that's agriculture or whether that's uh, our uh, small, quote, small town uh, community lifestyles and so on, I think those are also critical issues. And it doesn't mean we shut out uh, new growth and development. It just realizes that from a sustainability standpoint, we have to understand that there is a cost to growth. And yes, we have development charges, which are all focused on uh, growth paying for growth. But at the same point, I think we all understand is that uh, there are uh, costs beyond the municipal tax dollar that we're all dealing with in terms of uh, uh, whether it's increased tra traffic and congestion or whether there's uh, other issues that we're dealing with in terms of uh, land availability. So those are my two uh, points uh, would be under planning and growth and, and the community well-being and safety. Uh, so are there any questions of me uh, with my comments? I'll just look there if there's any questions.
Okay, so I don't see any. So uh, I'm going to flip things uh, here a little bit. Uh, I didn't say that uh, we were going to go back to the first. So given the fact that uh, uh, some of the ones towards the end uh, were preempted, uh, I would like to uh, uh, slide to Councillor Seiler uh, and then uh, Councillor Richardson, and we'll go sort of reverse uh, there. And then uh, end uh, after Councillor Andreessen, I'll take my second shot. But uh, Councillor Seiler, do you have any, I, again, two more points, so we'll limit it to that. Uh, Councillor Seiler, do you have uh, two more you wish to add? Uh, uh, service amenities, maybe um, just, uh, I guess, with their public works and, and fire and whatnot, just to try to keep on top of uh, these things there and uh, make sure that all our public works has got good facilities and if we're, if we're doing the right thing. Uh, we're at our facilities and they have the right e equipment, the right tools to work with and whatnot. I guess probably would be uh, my one there, and uh, and our operations. I think that are, are um, it'd be nice to make sure that we're doing our with the snow removal in the winter time, and and with all our grass cutting and whatnot, with our ditches and in, in the rural area, and and our maintenance of uh, of our municipality sidewalks and. Uh, and whatnot have you around and uh, which I think we, we try to do every year but just uh, regularly go around with our municipal operations and uh, keep things tidy thank you thank you Councillor Seiler any questions for Councillor Seiler I don't see any so you're very clear Councillor Seiler thank you very much uh, we'll slide to uh, Councillor Richardson please Thank you again. I guess I should have saved my third point from the first round to come back to have actually one here, but that's that's okay. I think that the three points that I had given, and then I'm just going to provide a comment, would be, from my perspective, sufficient for now, because depending on where they go, they could be quite lofty just in themselves. And I also think, uh, going back to Councillor Anstead's uh, about a COVID recovery I think we still need to be very, very cognizant of how this budget is going to look because Councillor Anstead said a while ago, we didn't think this year coming around at this point in time, going through budget again, the COVID would be a thing. It still is very much a thing. Um, and we don't know what the next year can bring. We can't certainly can't say that it's not going to do anything in a year because we said that last year and here we are. So I still think we need to be very, very cognizant of the possibility of unexpected costs that are coming up with COVID recovery. I still think we have to be very cautious going forward. We have some very good ideas on here from my perspective, some very expensive ideas on here from my perspective. I just think we have to still be incredibly wary with the money that we're in charge of um, because we, as all times can be uncertain, but especially in the midst of a pandemic that look what we currently have now and i'm certainly not fear-mongering in any way but i'm just saying i just think we need to to be very cognizant again for, at least for this budget but uh, for the points that i had brought up prior i think that that is sufficient for now i don't need to add a lot more to the to the list now because it would just be redundant for previously made comments so thank you so much and thank you council rich and i appreciate that and again if if uh, you don't have any more uh uh, items to add, that's fine. Uh, this isn't uh, sort of a, a clear, uh, but if you do, uh, we can certainly do those. Uh, and uh, if uh, we don't get to all of your comments, I'm going to suggest that uh, uh, this is not sort of a one and done situation. There can very well be other uh, opportunities to uh, certainly uh, inform members of uh, council and staff uh, regarding some other ideas that you may have. So thanks very much, uh, Councillor Richardson. Deputy Mayor Kellum. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair Rothwell. And yes, in no particular order, there's there are all kinds. And I'm glad you just made that comment because there's so many that we can, and uh, you don't want to overwhelm staff and uh, try to bring things back. But just two two very quick things, and uh, we are on it. I just want to with the rural um, internet. I know we have some great things coming down the pipe. I just want to make sure that. 
the municipality is ready to support any further internet opportunities uh, with the work that is going in progress. So I want to make sure that that's going. Secondly, and uh, uh, outdoor pool. You know, um, I keep get asking about that down the road. We are maintaining the pool that we have right now. Uh, I think it's time to maybe upgrade it for, for future generations, future council members, and maybe just an update on where we are where we are with that. Because obviously, as uh, Councilor Richardson said, uh, times have changed with, with COVID opportunities. And um, yeah, so I just would, wouldn't mind a, a, an update on a, on a new outdoor pool possibility. Thank you. Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Uh, I will add, uh, certainly, uh, uh, our staff, Amy, has uh, provided uh, a report uh, to the uh, council previously and certainly through uh, North uh, Perth's uh, Recreation Advisory Committee regarding uh, possible plans moving forward uh, regarding uh, the outdoor pool in Listowel and ideas uh, towards its uh, uh, potential replacements. So I'm sure uh, staff will be able to uh, move forward uh, to provide that information as well as other uh, things as well. Uh, any questions from council uh, of the deputy mayor's comments? If not, thank you very much, uh, deputy mayor. Uh, mayor Todd, you're next, please. Well, thank you very much. Um, the good news is my list of 16 has uh, been whittled down sufficiently by uh, my colleagues' input. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful for uh, so many great minds um, sharing some of the thoughts that I've had uh, as well uh, over the course of preparing for this. Um, I think uh, one of the things that intrigues me that, that I have um, questions about and uh, that we probably need start to come to reasonable answers uh, about is the establishment of a tourism focus in North Perth or for North Perth. And uh, I've talked a little bit about this in various public places and people kind of resonate with notions that uh, North Perth could be a great agricultural tourism uh, center. It could also be a great sports tourism center. And uh, I think that it would warrant some small investment, perhaps in a consultant to start uh, working with not just a council, but with members of the community to try to understand whether there's opportunity around tourism, because that can certainly uh, provide um, revenue and, and uh, opportunities for our youth that perhaps were not here before and opportunities for seniors perhaps that were not here before. So that's, that's one uh, item that I'd like to draw to attention. I think the second is that um, I, we need to continue to um, work on digital transformation in the organization uh, the, the highest priority on that front, I believe, is GIS services and making sure that a lot of our municipal data that is amenable to GIS is actually transformed and made available um, in the various layers that uh, GIS uh, technology allows for. Um, that includes open data, which is a mandate that um, has been given to all governments of all level. Um, to uh, release data and make available data sets to the public. And that's not something that we've had a lot of exposure or experience with to this point. And that also includes the possibility around uh, greater use of, of uh, digital uh, uh, technologies to enable municipal service uh, collection. So uh, individuals seeking permits and licenses and, and the range of things, um, we should continue to, to forge ahead and uh, I think the good news is that council has allocated towards an IT strategic plan um, funding that is dedicated to that, but perhaps given our experiences with the pandemic and what we've learned about um, how services can be pretty easily compromised if they're face-to-face, -face, uh, we need to make that much more available. And uh, the challenge will continue to be uh, populations uh, where equity will be an issue because they're not computer savvy or whatever, and, and we need to find ways to support that too. But I think that digital transformation is a key part of the delivery of services efficiently and effectively and, and over the near term will help us save money in terms of administration. So those are two things that I've been thinking about. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. Any questions uh, from Mayor Todd regarding these uh, items? I can add at the uh, county, uh, 
work uh, was underway and uh, frankly should be uh, up already on the uh, open data on the GIS side. Uh, this was a project that uh, had been worked on uh, over two years ago, so I know that uh, work uh, hopefully could be completed soon to uh, to deal with open data uh, that's required uh, to be used or available uh, for those that would be uh, coming forward with uh, applications that would be of general uh, availability and uh, use of uh, residents within uh, and visitors within Perth County. So. Uh, that includes north, south, east, and west, and Stratford and St. Mary's as well. So, so hopefully there is uh, progress on that front uh, as well, and uh, it may not be too far away. Thanks, Mayor Todd. We'll move to uh, Councillor Johnston, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair Rothwell, and I almost made it without anybody bringing up this point until the mayor, of course, steps on my toes again. Um, but the, the tourism part of it was, for me, was, was kind of an, an intriguing thing. And the agriculture tourism, um, it was talked about in our COVID um, agriculture group, um, you know, about a farmer's market or, or something promoting all the local products and the local agriculture that we have here um, that I think could be done so much better, um, that we could be, you know, show off that we are, you know, a tremendous agriculture center. Yes, the tourism, hey, the, there, there's no limit. The sky's the limit to that. So I think we could definitely do that. And the other one in it, and I, I know it's being done already, and I don't know if we can do it any better, um, you know, more under municipal operations, but it's staff retention slash filling vacancies. And, and it, you know, I just, it, it seems we all, I know we always have vacancies and there's always staff moving around, but it would be, and I, I know we try to maintain as much staff as we can and keep them here, but it would just be, you know, great if, if we are the de destination to work, the spot to work for here and, and staff want to stay instead of searching for someone that pays five cents higher an hour. So that's something that always is kind of a, Maybe my loyalty is is a little too deep since you know my my roots run 130 years deep in this community. But but maybe I have a little more loyalty than some. But staff retention is uh, high on my list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. How many generations is Maple View Farms now? Uh, I'm only five, but I'm certainly looking forward to the sixth that are uh, coming on. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Any questions uh, from Council? If not, uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Will uh, Councillor Duncan, please? I've got uh, two, two more. They're more or less comments. And the first one is kind of the elephant in the room. Um, I think we all know that we're still looking at basing things on a 2016 assessment. MPACs held our reassessments. They're going to hold them again for the 2022 tax year, according to their website. At some point, we're going to have to play catch up. Uh, I think if anybody's watched the local real estate, there's no $265,000 house being sold in North Perth currently. So we're going to see quite a jump in the residential assessment. That's out of our control as a council. We need to realize that we're going to see a lot of people have huge tax increases when they see two rounds of reassessments because the next round starts next year. So I think that we have to be very cognizant of that happening. And I, I, I truly believe we need to get impact to release those reassessments and start phasing them in. The second one, uh, we've discussed a lot about road and infrastructure. Uh, I think it's very important that we use our asset management and our asset condition indexes to decide which assets need replaced first. We had a very interesting presentation at the county about this. Sometimes it pays to fix a certain asset at a certain point in time to make it last longer, even though that may not be your worst asset in the municipality at that time. So I think it's very important that we that we use our data to to move forward and, and make good decisions on what 
we are uh, replacing and what we're not. So that's my, my two. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Duncan. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Mayor Todd, I know uh, you have brought forward a resolution at uh, the county regarding MPAC. Does it uh, relate uh, to assessment? Do you want to enlighten the rest of Council on that? Or was it more sort of uh, service-based delivery? Yeah, it was focused on the a greater understanding. The province has opened um, a consultation on the service performance of MPAC and um, issues related to MPAC governance and so forth. And so uh, the resolution that I brought forward at the county and which was endorsed by County Council um, has uh, invited uh, Perth County to prepare for that invitation from the province to provide feedback and questions about MPAC, including analyzing their uh, annual reports and looking at assessment issues across the county. So uh, the treasurers are engaged, as I understand it, um, uh, in supporting uh, Treasurer um, uh, Corey in, in the Perth County uh, for the purposes of, um, of that uh, as evaluation. And, and it doesn't address specifically the, the question that um, Councillor Duncan raised, but Councillor Duncan's question uh, and point is a very real and ominous uh, presence in our lives in the near future. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd, and uh, thanks, Councillor Duncan, for your comments. Uh, certainly, when we were uh, talking before, uh, here in the last uh, reassessment, uh, it was the agricultural properties that uh, took a significant uh, uh, hit in terms of uh, increases and so on, and uh, even at that time, there was uh, expectation the residential would, at some point, uh, at least catch up, uh, if not surpass. So. Not to say uh, you can ever be prepared for such a, a significant increase, but that's our reality, unfortunately. So thanks very much uh, for those comments. Councillor Behrens. Uh, thank you, Chair Rothwell. I did have uh, two points. Just when we're talking about the planning and growth, I still think that we should be looking at the additional housing units and I know that's going to go like you mentioned above um, the official plan and things like that but we've got some cores and some buildings that we could really improve the affordability as people mentioned the affordability is starting to um, disconnect or cripple our employment workforce our labor workforce because um, you can't live here you can't afford to buy a house here and it just cripples everything. So that would be my one point, and that would probably go under planning and, and development. My second point, and I'm going to take you back to the survey for a minute, and I know that uh, Councillor Duncan had talked about assessment, and what really struck me in the presentation of the information came on page, excuse me, 132 and 135, where it's con comparing what the urban um, basis of 265,000 would pay towards services compared to what the rural property. Now, I will note that neither one of them say that they contain a house, but here's the situation. Um, for the rural at 1.3, um, I don't know where you're getting, like it would definitely probably be around the 50 acres, but it could be bare land. We have an awful lot of rural property that does not contain a house. And here's the scenario, if the slide is right, and I really think we have to check it, it means that that, let's suggest it's 50 acres of bare land is paying more for library service and parks and recreation than what a house in town is paying at 265000 We know that some of these are people services, but you can see um, what I'm saying is, and this was in my original comment, it's a matter of fairness and principle. If that bare land doesn't have any people that would use the parks and recreation or use the library, and I know you can't split it down like that, 
but I'm concerned about these slides um, going to the public because I'm pretty sure a lot of the agricultural people are going to pick up on it as well. I realize that we're in a public meeting right now, but um, I would encourage everyone to take a look at those two slides and just cite the difference. So my, sorry, long story short, I just think it's a matter of the fairness of the assessment. And, and I take to heart Councillor Duncan's because uh, we have had shifts back and forth and sooner or later, um, I think we're, we're going to get to the point where we're gonna have a mini revolt of ratepayers because of the services that they're paying for and their ability to access them, right? Um, so I'll, I'll end there, thanks. Councillor Behrens, I just want to confirm uh, that I think would be page 132 and is and then uh, is it 135 then just uh, to confirm that? Yes, that is correct. Those two slides, they're a little bit misleading or perhaps I'm interpreting them incorrectly. Um, just going by like it, it specifically says agricultural, which is spelt wrong, unfortunately. It does not say rural residential, right? So I think it's it's slightly misleading. So I, I really think we should maybe pay attention to that. But if those numbers are true, um, you can understand how some might feel that a bare piece of property in Wallace Township paying more for library service than what a house in town would pay is somewhat unfair and unrealistic. That's my comment. Okay, thanks, uh, Councillor Behrens and staff. If we can just uh, make note of that, uh, just to confirm uh, the accuracy of, of that uh, information shown on those uh, uh, two tables, page 132 and 135 on the slide deck, uh, or uh, on the uh, agenda package, please. And uh, I'm sure we can uh, have that uh, reviewed. I don't think uh, we can uh, have that uh, necessarily this evening here, but it's for the uh, conversation. Thanks, Councillor Behrens. Any other questions for Councillor Behrens? CAO Snell, please. And certainly Becky and Fran can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, and we can provide further information to Council, but my understanding that would be the average assessed rural agricultural property in North Perth. So it, 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 it's not just a 50 acre farm, it could be a full 100 acre farm. It's the average property and that's well, how we break it down in my opinion it would include a residential um, one residential um, um, as well as as the farmland um, Becky or Fran could, would, could maybe help clarify that but I mean, certainly we could add that information to the slide just so it's more clear Okay, uh, we're, thanks, uh, CEO Snell. Uh, supplemental from Councillor Behrens, please. Okay, but you do understand that that is not necessarily clear. It would not be, there's no way an average ag agricultural assessment, that would not be a 100 acre farm with a house on it. It not for the average of, of 1.3. So I think I just want you to take a second look at the information that's being presented to make sure that it is accurate. As you can understand, I took it because it was 1.3. I took it as bare land. Um, so just please either um, take a second look at the slides and maybe refine if necessary. So, so I guess, I, and that's the problem, and that, as Councillor Duncan had mentioned, we're dealing with 2016 assessment, which is actually based on 2016 markets. So we all know the markets changed significantly since then. So our our um, our averages are way out of whack. I mean, it's, as just as Councillor Duncan said, you can't even find an average house as in in North Perth that would that would go for 235 either. So there's no question. There's no question because we've fallen behind the assessment game, the averages that, that, and the information that we're using as averages is not accurate based because we, in my opinion, we're using old impact data. Thanks, CAO Snell. Uh, 
again, I guess the issue, the issue still is that everyone's on the old in yes. North Perth. That's correct. So, so it should not uh, adversely uh, affect us in terms of uh, the relationship between uh, urban residential and uh, agriculture. Like, like the, they're all assessed at the same, uh, on the same date. I think that's my point. So uh, clearly, as uh, Councillor Duncan, uh, in in particular, pointed out, uh, the new assessment when we do get that is going to be uh, uh, a wake up call for everyone. I think that's the reality. Well, and I think uh, as a good point, um, Chairman Raffel, we're really going to have to um, do some education around when those assessment comes up, because well, most people are going to see their assessment probably likely triple that doesn't mean their tax bills necessarily going to triple either um, but but that will take some certainly some good communication on our part to, to so we don't have mass panic amongst the masses about their next tax bill understood and again uh, I'm just uh, noting uh, our treasurer uh, director of finance uh, Francis Hill do you want to speak to that issue uh, Fran please um, I was just in wanting to clarify or hope to bring back something to Council just to clarify uh, Councillor Barron's concerns, if that's something that you would like, just so we can be quite clear what those slides mean and we'll add that uh, for public uh, consumption as well. I think that's a good point that we need to be really clear what those slides, to the best of our ability, are, are saying uh, based on what information we provided and what responses we got. Thank you, Fran. I think that uh, we'll look forward to providing that uh, for all of Council. And thanks, uh, Councillor Berens, for bringing that forward. I do want to recognize uh, Mayor Todd, and I think the answer uh, was uh, correct, is that the assessment uh, base is as on what MPAC says is the amount or value at that time. Go ahead, Mayor Todd. There are much brighter minds than me around this stuff uh, at this table, including Treasurer Hale. So I think we should wait for Treasurer Hale to bring forward some information. But uh, certainly, I think yeah, I was typing that as CAO Snell was explaining that at the point in time, um, those were the values, the comparative values of the average farm assessment and the average residential assessment at that point in time. And so as a consequence, that's how we try to factor. I think that's how that slide was factored, right, is against that time point. Um, but, you know, I think we're all very aware and painfully aware that there's been a shift in the relative value of farm and with a slower growth slope in terms of value versus residential, which has had a steeper growth slope over the last five years. And so um, as Councillor Duncan rightly points out, um, you'd be hard pressed to find a home in North Perth for 265 or whatever the number was at this point in time. Um, but again, that's MPAC's hypothetical value back five years ago, right? Yes. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. And thanks, uh, Fran and, uh, and uh, Chris, uh, that uh, we will look forward to staff providing some clarification uh, regarding those tables. Thank you very much. Uh, We'll move to Councillor Anstett and then uh, Vice Chair Andreessen, please. Thank you, Chair Rothwell, for you. And I just wanted to touch briefly on two of the other themes uh, that were brought up. First one is uh, just what Councillor Richardson had said regarding traffic and roads and uh, photo radar. I would say as a Councillor, this is probably one of the most, most emails I get is regarding roads and traffic and that sort of thing. And I'm certainly intrigued by the option of photo radar. I know a lot of other municipalities across Ontario and Canada, for that matter, are doing it. So I think that's something that I would really like to look at in terms of public safety. Um, we have a lot of young children here in North Perth, and not only that, we have other people that um, that are, use the roads every day and, and could be at uh, at risk by these by people not following our traffic laws. The next one that I wanted to touch about on, and everybody's talked about it, and I'm glad to see that is affordable housing. I don't think I would be wrong to say that we're not at a tipping point; we're past the tipping point in terms of affordable housing in Canada. I mean, you don't, I could pull up stats. We all could pull up stats, but I think the last uh, federal election certainly highlighted the issues with unaffordability here in Canada. And I don't think, if, I mean, if we don't do something now, um, it's not going to get better. 
So I think it's going to involve not only us, but all three levels of government to make some significant change in terms of, I think it was Councillor Behrens that talked about the the impact on the labor force. I mean, we're already seeing that now for people that can't afford to work here because they can't afford to live here. So those are the two themes that I just wanted to touch on and looking forward to some action on those. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Anstett. So any questions uh, to Councillor Anstett? If not, thanks very much uh, for your comments. Uh, Vice Chair Andreessen, go ahead, please. Thank you through you, um, Chair Rothwell. Uh, it's such a privilege to sit and listen to all of our colleagues share these themes. Um, I agree with each and every one of you with all of your points. Um, such great thinking and sharing has already been done this evening, so I'm really really privileged to sit here and be part of this team. Um, I could echo, you know, 100% of what everyone has said so far. So thank you for putting a lot of thought into to this process. I just want to add one more thing, I think, from my perspective. Um, and this is around municipal operations. And this would be for um, operational type of budget versus capital budget, I think. Um, and that is, um, to continue with uh, supporting and investing in IT services um, at, in, in North Perth. Um, one of the things that's come to the forefront, even since our past meeting, was just around the council chambers and trying to look at the possibility of a hybrid model for meetings. And we have come a long way. We have overcome great um, you know, issues with getting together and doing this um, you know, meeting as a council um, remotely, and that seems to work. But there is much more work to be done, I believe, and investment to, to make it work from a hybrid model. And that became quite clear um, that it's it's going to take some, you know, changes, more changes to the uh, chambers to make that work, from perhaps installation of more cameras, um, and also consideration about, you know, IT in general to support that. Um, so I just, I feel that that should be placed as a priority because it's about how we conduct business, right? It's about how we need to work together and things are gonna continue to change. Um, we've been just in that flux of change because of COVID and we all know that it hasn't ended yet and uh, we're, we're still trying to, to work within these new parameters. And I think some, um, you know, investment in the chambers t to um, have a hybrid model at some point would be would be helpful. Um, one of the things that was mentioned before, just as my second comment, is um, you know the importance of attracting new business and and through economic development here in North Perth. And um, I totally support that. One of my concerns though, and it was just kind of um, mentioned in our in the last comment was just around the labor force sustainability because our our demand for um, workers is is just you know incredible in all all factors of life in all all types of industries, um, professional areas, we need workers and we know that we don't have affordable housing to support that in our area. So I guess it's worrisome when we're trying to attract business and trying to attract industry, but we don't have the workers for that. So I, I, we just have to be cautious, I think, in terms of economic development, because there's probably more work to be done in other areas before we try and attract more business, um, because we don't have the workforce to support it. We are already at a critical point right now. We've already hit that. Um, and I, I worry about um, bringing more business in because they, they won't have the workforce to manage that. And that's why we don't have new restaurants and that's why we don't have more stores or more services in, in our commercial areas because there's no one to work it, right? There's no, no one to do those jobs and um, we've already hit that critical issue right now. It's going to be about how do we handle it moving forward? What's our next steps to s sustain what we do have? 
because actually um, we have to help those businesses that are here and help them be sustainable, let alone think about bringing new ones in. And that's certainly my concern at this point. So thank you for the opportunity, uh, Chair Rothwell. And again, it's been most enjoyable to listen and, and share this work with our colleagues. Thank you. Thanks, Vice Chair Andreessen. Uh, any questions uh, for, for those points? Thanks very much uh, for those uh, comments, uh, Vice Chair Andreessen. Uh, I do have uh, one other uh, uh, item I would like to uh, mention for Council to uh, consider. And this is uh, something that's important under the roads uh, issue as uh, we have uh, increased traffic and increased demands in terms of operational hours. Uh, for members of the public or uh, transports and so on uh, with just-in-time deliveries and so on. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, ask the question when we uh, do see the uh, uh, traffic master plan as to whether or not some of our currently local roads should in fact become county roads. And again, the reason why county roads are established is to uh, uh, maintain uh, roads that are uh, have uh, high volumes of traffic, uh, oftentimes between settlement areas and so on. And I can say is that it's been uh, quite some time since there's ever uh, been a new county road established with, in Perth County. However, I, I would say when we do have the master uh, plan for transportation here in uh, North Perth, we are going to see some of the traffic volumes and uh, many will be uh, surprised in terms of some of the uh, traffic volumes uh, as people have found uh, other ways uh, out of our settlement areas and whether it's uh, Listowel or whether it's uh, Atwood uh, in terms of or uh, traffic that has found its way around uh, some of our settlement areas. So I would like us to uh, look at that as a consideration uh, and that's not necessarily uh, uh, strictly a budget issue it could very well be uh, part of the discussion on the uh, roads uh, master plan so uh, that's my uh, last comment now uh, if anyone has any uh, questions about that that's fine i can uh, address that i would just like to note uh, it's uh, almost uh what's 20 to 9 or so uh is it the desire of council to uh, sort of uh, flesh out the rest of everyone's list or have we uh, feel though uh, we've kept uh, Pat scribing here. I think we're on the page two. Is it Pat of our listing here? Just, just on the page uh, two of our listing. Uh, and not to say that that is uh, exhaustive, uh, but if there's uh, uh, we can look to the uh, chat list uh, instead of going uh, councillor by councillor. If if you have uh, any additional uh, items that you'd like to add, then that's fine. I'm just looking here. I've got a couple of uh, councillors saying that they're fine. Okay, uh, Mayor Todd, you have one. You have one more, Mayor Todd. Go ahead. I think one, one more that's worth hearing at this point. Um, I know that we're awaiting the results of the transportation master plan and that we'll learn a lot from that and, and be looking to begin our strategic investment in supporting um, the outcomes that are advocated for and that council can approve. Uh, but I think specifically uh, with regards to recent experience in roads um, that we need to seriously consider uh, getting started on the resurfacing and renovation of Elma from Wallace to Victoria. I think that's a street that is um, now in the spotlight in our community uh, as a consequence of our one-way traffic trial and people have realized that this street needs some attention. So from a capital perspective, um, I'm not saying it needs to get done in 2022, but I'm saying that we should at least do the planning and engineering and um, get moving on that one because uh, there's yet bigger uh, capital infrastructure projects in the downtown to happen um, and we might as well get them moving. Thank you, Mayor Todd. And I'm looking at our list. It looks like everyone else is uh, satisfied. And uh, I do want to thank uh, councillors for your time 
an effort uh, to put uh, forward some visionary ideas uh, here, as well as uh, our 36 members of the public that uh, did take the opportunity to uh, provide uh, input uh, through to us. So with that, I will close at least the formal uh, session here uh, in our budget visiting, visioning session uh, here. So uh, we can slide to uh, the council summation and direction, which is item 6.4. Uh, my understanding uh, is that uh, the expectation of, of this uh, uh, quest uh, that we've been on here is to provide uh, sort of a brainstorming idea in terms of providing uh, council uh, the opportunity to give senior staff suggestions and direction on uh, for the budgeting process. So uh, I would remind everyone that that's, so this is our first meeting of the budget. Uh, we have uh, five more scheduled, two more this year, November 24th and December 8th. And on the uh, second meeting, it's uh, in, uh, this would be November 24th, is to provide the budget committee with a comprehensive uh, 2022 operating budget with individual supporting documentation by department. And then direction from council uh, committee on uh, budget committee on any changes or amendments to be made to the project budgets as presented. Now I can say uh, in uh, the information I have uh, from our staff is that they are working uh, very hard uh, in terms of the conversion to our new uh, accounting uh, package. Uh, Becky uh, and Fran have uh, provided uh, information on that respect. Things are going well, uh, but perhaps not as uh, quickly as they would like. And uh, anyone that knows from an accounting standpoint, the more lines you have, the more difficult it is, or accounts you have, the more difficult it is to convert it uh, and uh, simplify it uh, into, a, into a new system that's going to have the full uh, understanding in terms of uh, previously as well as into the future. So, uh, staff uh, have assured us uh, on the budget committee that uh, they're satisfied uh, or at least the chair and vice chair uh, that uh, staff are satisfied with our consultant moving forward they are working diligently on this but there's a lot of work yet to do uh, so staff as i understand here departmentally are going to be operating with the uh, our current system in place uh, to provide uh, the uh, uh, budget information here in november and uh, the uh, third meeting in December, which is providing uh, our committee here with departmental project forecasts, uh, as well as 22, 2023 uh, project budgets uh, for consideration uh, by the various departments and the direction from the committee on changes and amendments to be made to the project budgets as presented. So that's as far as I'll go in terms of detail, but then we go into January 12th and 26th as well as Fe uh, February the 9th so there's a lot of work and effort to build this but again uh, understanding that uh, as for the public here uh, certainly councillors understand this is that the budget is the uh, founda foundational uh, 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 foundation that we have to um, build uh, and uh, provide services to our municipality uh, both now in terms of our current service levels as well as projecting into the future. What our needs are, as I said earlier, uh, in terms of the day-to-day -day, uh, functionality that we have uh, here within our community and what we uh, would like to have in terms of the future to address, and again, some of the budget visioning uh, issues that uh, our uh, members of the budget committee have brought forward here today. So council will know, or committee will know that uh, we do have uh, staff uh, are going to be providing some uh, clarification issues uh, here with respect to the tabular information which uh, Councillor Barron's brought forward, as well as uh, to provide some additional uh, information on some of those other uh, matters that were brought forward. So is there any other uh, direction? I'll just look to uh, CAO Snell, as well as uh, uh, Director of uh, Finance, uh, Francis Hale, if there's any additional direction uh, staff need with respect to our budget visioning session here this evening. CAO Snell? I don't think there's anything from my end that um, is questioned or misunderstanding or need more information on from tonight's session so far. So I think, thank you. Thanks, CAO Snell. Uh, Francis uh, Hale, any? Uh, 
further uh, direction that you need from uh, the budget visioning here this evening from the committee? Uh, Councillor Rothwell, Council, uh, I think we've gotten a, a tremendous amount of uh, ideas that Council's bringing forward for us to try and uh, work with. Of course, um, I think one of the things that uh, uh, will be crucial this go around will be that prioritizing that we'll have to have done later by Council and sort of be setting these out in a timeline uh, that uh, we can address and achieve maybe all of the ideas that have been set forward. But um, certainly, uh, um, I think that priority structure that we uh, have available to us that Becky brought forward uh, through the committee last year is a great uh, when council uh, required the prioritizing. I think that'll be crucial this year. Uh, just to make sure that we uh, get everybody's uh, ideas in a, in a format that we can execute it. Only so many dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. Pardon me. Okay. Uh, Mayor Todd. Uh, thanks, Chair Rothwell. Um, I just, I, I sort of wanted to go down that line and make sure that uh, staff has um, the opportunity to bring back, and, and maybe it's at a regular council meeting if they need uh, input between now and the next meeting um, uh, on some of the things we've talked about. Because certainly I'll give an example. Um, many councillors raised the issue of traffic and transportation issues. Uh, right now, um, we have a budget that's allocated to the transportation master plan as a consulting process. So the question then that staff would be left with is, okay, because there was such an emphasis on this in this meeting, what additional spends or changes in the spend profile might be warranted in 2022 with regards to the transportation file, if you will. And, and they may be left with uncertainties about that. So I'm gonna suggest from a process perspective that if staff has questions about some of the, what were um, in many respects, political or, or policy issues that we raised tonight, that um, they should feel free to come back to council and ask for clarification about what we meant or offer possible angles, um, because how do you prioritize if you don't understand the scope of what you're trying to do, right? On on the, you know, if you were to put transportation master plan or, or traffic and transportation on a prioritizing grid, what does that mean to any of us? Uh, we're, we all know it's very important, but in terms of changing the spending priorities of the corporation, what does that mean? And if we don't have a clarity around that, then then I think the staff is left with an awkward position of trying to figure out what we intend. So um, I hope you don't mind, Mr. Chair, if I suggest that, that staff in those areas where there were sort of big picture thinking, mental health, transportation, traffic, affordable housing, um, you know, there's a couple of things that, that um, you might need to know about that. And if that's the case, uh, please bring it back um, at a council meeting between now and then so that the prioritizing can be done effectively and, and with a little bit more granularity. Thanks, Mayor Todd. And uh, just uh, CAO Snell, if you can, uh, if, if you uh, agree with the uh, comments, at least uh, in trying to address those, uh, any questions or concerns that staff have with respect to uh, uh, what arises out of uh, uh, staff's review of, of the uh, table, uh, tabular information on the budget visioning. Uh, between uh, yourself, uh, CEO Snell, and uh, the mayor and the clerk, I'm sure we can uh, add those uh, to uh, a council agenda so that we're not, uh, in fact, waiting until another budget meeting to, uh, to get the clarifications required. So with that understanding, can you uh, confirm that, CEO Snell? Yes, for sure, and, and and certainly concur with the mayor that some of the some of the discussion points of tonight are already projects that are, that, that may be already underway, but it certainly is important to um, understand the priorities of council. And so, I think as we um, as as a as a staff team um, go through the list, we can certainly um, report back in the near future on on sort of. Um, either the progress, outcomes, or direction of some of the priorities. Thank you, CAO Snell. And uh, with Council's uh, 
uh, blessing then if if there's any other uh, questions we can take them now if not uh, we will go to the last item on the agenda adjournment uh, so I do have a resolution here that council meeting adjourns at uh, 8 55 p.m. Uh, to meet again for general council business on Monday October the 18th uh, Councillor Johnson could you would be prepared to move that that's my favorite one to move. Of course, I would move it. And uh, Mayor Todd Kaysenberg, who never gets to do this, uh, would you prepare to second that motion, please? I would happily second that. There we are. Uh, all those in favor, just use your e-scribe there, please. Well, uh, I will declare us uh, adjourned. And, I, and again, uh, I want to thank uh, all of our staff uh, uh, that participated uh, both in preparations for this uh, meeting uh, and certainly Pat for scribing as well as Simon to keep uh, everything moving so slowly, uh, uh, smoothly along, including uh, giving me a headset to uh, hopefully be uh, uh, heard uh, more clearly. And uh, just picking up on a couple things, I want to certainly wish uh, members of council and staff and certainly members of the public a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you can safely uh, uh, join with family members in uh, an appropriate fashion and uh, celebrate uh, those things that we truly have to be thankful for. Um, so we'll bid you all adieu and good evening. Hello. 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 Hello.